Big changes are coming to the way that you buy a home in 2024. Changes that could completely alter the way that you work with your real estate agent and how compensation is paid. Whether you're a first time home buyer or someone who has purchased multiple properties, this is going to impact you. And in today's video, we're going to go over exactly what those changes mean along with how they might impact you so that you can become a more educated home buyer in 2024. My name is Jeb Smith. I've been a real estate agent for over 20 years and my channel is all about educating home buyers and sellers through this crazy process. So if you find any value in today's video at all, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel to stay updated on everything real estate related. Now, the main reason you're here is to figure out what the changes are and how they're going to impact you. Essentially, there are three different things that are happening with this NAR settlement, which is the National Association of Realtors. Essentially, we have a change in the way representation is approached. We're going from an informal approach, if you will, to a more formal approach. And I'll explain what that means here in just a minute. And the second thing we have is a decoupling of compensation. The way things that have always been done in the past has been changed. And if you're someone out there buying a home, this is going to impact you. And the third thing that we're going to touch on is process and practice upgrade. So the way that things were done in the past is essentially changing. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail, along with answering some really, really important questions along this topic, questions that you probably have. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is that change in representation. But before we do that, I want to talk about the three contracts that govern a real estate transaction. The first one of those agreements is the listing agreement, which essentially binds the seller to the listing agent. This is a contract between the person selling their home and the person that they are hiring to represent them. And in this agreement, it talks about everything from what they're going to list the home at. And in the past, that contract typically stated what the buyer's agent was getting compensated as well. But that has changed. And so that brings up the second document that we're going to talk about that governs the real estate transaction, which is the buyer representation and broker compensation agreement. Now, this agreement is the agreement between the buyer and the brokerage and the agent that you're hiring to represent you. And the third agreement that you have that governs the real estate transaction is the residential purchase agreement, the RPA. And this is an agreement between the seller and the buyer. So you have three different agreements, one between the seller and the listing agent, the second between the buyer and the buyer's agent, and the third between the buyer and the seller. Now, for some of you, you may be telling me, Jeb, you're not telling me anything new. I've always signed some sort of buyer representation agreement to have my agent represent you. Understand, because some agents have always done that in the past, but here's the thing. It's never been a requirement until now, but that's really not the biggest change. The biggest change is the decoupling of compensation, which ultimately affects the way your buyer's agent gets paid. But going back a little bit and talking about those changes in representation, I want to be very, very clear. There is a new requirement for this buyer representation agreement, and it's required on every single transaction. And it requires a buyer to sign a formal agreement to work with a specified agent, just as sellers signed that listing agreement that we went over earlier. So the sellers always had a formal agreement to bind the contract between themselves and the person they were hiring to represent them. Whereas the buyers have never really had to have that formal agreement, if you will. It was kind of this informal relationship, if you will. And the biggest change is this formalization of relationships specifying not only who your agent is, but the compensation in which they're expecting to get paid. Now, I know some of you are probably watching this going, well, what if I walk into an open house? Do I need a compensation agreement? Well, make sure you stay tuned because I'm going to address some of these questions at the end of the video. The second thing we want to talk about is this decoupling of compensation, where we're essentially going from this seller-directed compensation model to a buyer-directed compensation model. Because in the past, you've always had this cooperation of compensation where the listing agreement, that agreement between the seller and the listing agent also listed the compensation that they were willing to pay the buyer's agent at that time. Well, that has essentially gone away, which has more or less killed that seller directed model. And now it's become a buyer directed model, shifting it from commission sharing between the listing agent and the buyer's agent to a direct payment, which can come in several different forms, which we'll talk about here in just a minute as we break down how this compensation is actually going to get paid. So just to recap, the old system, if you will, compensation was traditionally shared between the listing agent and the buyer's agent, whereas the new system compensation is either paid directly by the seller 
or the buyer and not split between agents or brokerages, which means cooperating compensation is now done. That's terminology that we'll no longer use. So you're probably wondering, well, how can the buyer's agent actually get paid? Well, there are four different ways that agent can get paid. And the first way looks a lot like the original way, which is where the seller pays the listing agent and the seller also pays the buyer's agent, but it's not done in one lump sum. It's coming directly from the seller versus previously it was sent to the brokerage and the brokerage has essentially paid each other. So yes, the seller can still pay the buyer's agent compensation. Now you might be wondering, how is that done? Well, it's part of that third agreement that we mentioned earlier, that residential purchase agreement, that RPA, that third contract, the one between the buyer and the seller. If you want the seller to pay your agent directly, you're going to make it part of that agreement. It's going to be one of the terms in the contract, but that's not the only way your buyer's agent can get paid. The second way they can get paid is the seller pays their agent directly, their listing agent, and you as a buyer can opt to pay your buyer's agent directly. Now you might be watching this going, why would I even do that? Well, in some cases, you might decide to pay your buyer's agent directly in order to make your offer more competitive. Think of it if you're in a multiple offer situation and everyone's at the same price, but one buyer has offered to pay the buyer's agent compensation directly out of pocket that might make your offer more competitive. So in some cases, that might be an option. Now, the third way is this hybrid, if you will, where the seller still pays the listing agent, but the seller also pays the buyer's agent and the buyer pays the buyer's agent. So let's say for our conversation here today, your agent and you have agreed that they're worth two and a half percent compensation in order to walk you through the real estate process, find you a great house at great terms that you're completely comfortable with. And if they do that, you're willing to pay them two and a half percent. But let's say, for example, you make an offer on a property and you build that two and a half percent into the contract. Well, let's say, for example, that seller comes back and says, no, we're not willing to pay that two and a half percent, but we are willing to pay 2%, which means there's half a percent that you agreed upon that isn't being paid. Well, if your agent says, hey, listen, you know, I still expect that other half percent, then there's an option for you to pay that half percent. So the seller's paying part of it, you as a buyer are paying part of it, which takes me into the fourth option, which is where the seller provides some sort of concession to the buyer as part of the agreement. However, it's structured. You might write it in as a buyer, you know, on a property that was you know, the purchase price would say 500,000. And let's say, for example, your agreement with your agent is $15,000 for, for our conversation here. Well, you might make the offer 515,000 just, you know, for, for the offer there and ask them to pay $15,000 towards concessions. And then you use that $15,000 to pay your agent, which means you're not really having to come up with the money out of your pocket. It's built in to concessions that are paid by the seller. Now, for most buyers out there, that is going to be the biggest change, but that's not the only change that's happening. So we talked about the representation approach. We talked about the decoupling of compensation. The third thing that we're going to talk about here is the process and practice upgrades that are actually happening within the industry itself. There's really three things that are happening that's really, really important for you as a buyer to be aware. Of. The first thing is the buyer must sign a formal representation agreement. We talked about that earlier. That is a change. It has to happen. Every single buyer using a real estate agent to help them purchase a home is going to have to have this formal agreement. Now, if you're representing yourself, you're not going to have to have this agreement, but as a buyer using a real estate agent, you're going to have to have that agreement. The second thing is compensation is now handled directly by the seller or the buyer, not shared between agents. And we talked about that too. But the third change is directly related to that. And that is the MLS will no longer show any signs of compensation. So previously speaking, as a buyer's agent representing a buyer, I could go online and I could see how much compensation was being offered to bring a buyer to that property. That's completely gone away you can no longer offer any compensation, mention compensation, mention anything about it anywhere on the multiple listing service. Now, you can mention it in open house flyers and other ways, but it can't be listed on the multiple listing service. So I'm sure there will be some creative ways to do it, but please understand as a buyer, it could be putting the seller at a competitive disadvantage by putting that out there. So as someone who also lists properties, don't be surprised if your buyer's agent calls on a listing that you want to see and they ask, hey, is compensation being offered? And that agent just says, hey, listen, submit it 
as part of your offer. If your buyer is looking to have their compensation covered, just submit it as part of the offer without answering the question directly. They're not required to answer that question directly. And it kind of goes back to the point that I mentioned a moment ago is if you have multiple offers, one against another, if someone hasn't asked for compensation as part of that agreement, then it could be a competitive advantage for the seller. They might actually end up netting more money. So by no longer having that compensation listed anywhere on the multiple listing service, you have to be more aggressive in how you approach offers. And don't be surprised if you don't know exactly what that seller is willing to pay. So it's super important that when you're building it into your agreement, you're signing an agreement with your real estate agent. It's somebody that you trust, that they are a professional. It's someone that you trust through the process because this person is now negotiating on your behalf for the terms of that house, but also the compensation and everything part of that agreement. So you need to make sure you have a real estate professional on your side, someone that understands all of this and can walk you through that process. Now, if you're here local to me, I would love to be that person for you. I would love to guide you through that process and help you get the best house at the best price, the best terms. But I realize I don't serve all of the United States, but I do have a network of real estate partners that work exactly like I do. So if you're located anywhere in the country and you need somebody to help walk you through this process, someone you can trust, do me a favor and check that referral link in the description of this video. So we went over those major changes, but now I want to address some commonly asked questions around these changes in everything that's happening. And the first one is something that I mentioned earlier is if you walk into an open house, are you required to have this representation agreement? And the answer is no. And that's because it's a public event. The listing agent who represents the seller is the one putting it on. Therefore, it's not required for you as a buyer to have this representation agreement with whoever's listing the property in order to see it. Now, if I'm being honest, there's probably some agents out there that are gonna try to get you to sign it. The reality is you don't have to have one if you're just walking into an open house. And the second one is compensation fixed. And the answer is no, compensation is not fixed. It's negotiable between the buyer and the buyer's agent. And it's also negotiable between the buyer and the seller and however the structure that you have set up. Which leads me into the third question is, do you actually have to pay compensation? And the answer is no. But if you're going to hire a real estate agent to represent you who is actually professional and who is reputable, then it's highly recommended. In fact, it's highly unlikely that they're going to represent you without some sort of compensation. And the third question is, is a buyer representation agreement mandatory? And the answer is yes. Whenever you're hiring or working with a buyer's agent to represent you, you're going to need to have that representation agreement in place. Leading me to the next question is, are these changes Changes effective everywhere? And the answer is yes, if you're in the United States and you're purchasing residential property. If you're outside the United States or you're purchasing commercial property, then there might be different things that apply. This is only for people buying in the United States and buying residential homes. And the last question is, can I keep working with my current real estate agent? The answer is yes, but the paperwork might be changing a little bit. You might now need couple of additional documents signed to formalize that agency relationship, which you've never had to do in the past, but now it's a requirement. So you're going to have to have those documents signed. So hopefully you found a little bit of value in today's video. Hopefully I was able to explain things in a way that you can understand, but here's where I'd like to ask a favor. How do you think these changes are going to go over? Do you think sellers are going to continue to pay the buyer's agent compensation? Do you think buyers are going to pay the compensation? What do you think it looks like going forward? Do me a favor and let me know in the comments below. Now with that, we went over the changes that are currently happening in the market, but realize that tactics change. Principles don't change. Principles stay the same forever. And there's a couple of key things that you need to know, principles, if you will, the foundation when it comes to buying a home. And if you wanna know more about that, do me a favor and check out this video here.